He has a beard and he has a mustache. He looks like dressed up in white. He is very bright. He is Heavenly Father's son. Jesus is our brother. He'd sacrifice a lot. Like, he tells us to care about other people. He'd like warn people about stuff, like, and make sure they're all safe because he cares about each one of us. Candle of faith, candle of faith, candle of faith is lit you and Jesus. We are your children, we are your children. Make every step with you and faith with hope and love. We love Now we are moving to the actual classroom. Here, what I'm going to do today, uh, we do have a recorded video uh, prepared by the Western Ridge I mean, uh, for the park of Mississauga. We'll play that video here, and my students have already joined. So this is going to be an actual classroom learning. So they're going to uh, listen to the video, and I'll check their understanding for sure. And if they have any questions from that, I'll definitely try to answer them. And as I told in the beginning, we'll go for a kind of um, discussion at the end of that, general discussion on the topic. Um, so are you all ready? Leon, Shreya, and Alvin? OK. So how are you guys doing now? You can unmute yourself and speak up. I'm doing good. I'm doing okay. How was your classes? It was good. How is going back to schools now? Yes. yes, it was really good. Do you feel that it's a little weird over there, like just going in with the mask and someone is standing at the door with the sanitizers? Yeah. You know, I just went to the school today morning just for an orientation for my son. And there were a couple of guys standing two doors like the guards and they were just uh, make sure that you get the sanitizers uh, make sure that you wear the mask and everything, a kind of another couple of instructions. And the people are in a big queue to get into the school. Seems to be not a kind of normal uh, school times before. Yeah, so you're getting into the schools and we are coming back uh, to the catechism uh, learning too. So we start this grade 10. How do you feel to come to grade 10 from grade nine? Progressing one more. Excited. excited, great. Yeah, I'm also very really excited to see you class see you guys in the class. Then how do you feel? Good. Anyone anyone feels that another burden of learning or we need to still learn the catechism? No, no, I know, I'm sure well, that you guys are actually, gonna feel that. It actually feels like a big difference going from grade nine to grade ten. What's the difference, Raya? I don't know. It just feels really dif different. Hmm. See, like, I mean, when it's like one to nine is one numeric and ten is two numeric, one zero. Yeah. I used to feel that when the grade 10, I was very excited to see that, okay, I'm no longer going to be a kind of a school student. Hereafter, might be called as a kind of higher secondary student or a diploma student. So that grade 10, in our times, I think it was a bigger kind of thing. Grade 10 was given a kind of lot of importance. If you don't pass grade 10, your life is gone or some kind of culture was there. So we were a little pressured to go to grade 10. We go, we leave all those relaxation time. It was a tough time. So this is not going to be like that for the grade 10. This is going to be a kind of great learning experience when you come to grade 10 in your catechism. So I understand that through the grade 9, you just learned about church as a worshiping community. So that was your uh, lessons from the grade nine. Eh? Do you do you reflect any of those kind of grade learnings? What was the essence of your last year? Mm. Just see if you remember something. Mm. Okay, I'll just move to a kind of saying. It's always telling that in a kind of Christian life, 
worship without action is not that fruitful. So we learned about the great uh, virtues and great learnings and great Bible thoughts about uh, worshiping God. How's a community, how worship the God, and how we need to be feeling involved in that community for the worship. And great 10 is all about how we are just making that into a kind of practical life. From worshiping, we are moving into a kind of missionary life. So this is going to be a kind of mission journey. As I have mentioned in my WhatsApp group before, this is a going journey going to be missionaries. We are going to learn how we can be missionaries of the church. Um, so uh, I know this is going to be a kind of different experience for you. Uh, just to give an introduction about our class structure, we have a kind of pre-recorded video uh, shooted by some of the volunteers from our parkey. Um, they are actually going to teach the lesson. I'm not going to teach the lesson today. Uh, the video is going to be the lesson. Uh, so what I do, I just give an introduction to the video, and the video contains us of a prayer in the beginning and a reflection in general about the Great Ten, since it's your first lesson. Uh, then what's ele elements in that first uh, chapter? And at the end, we'll have a discussion about that. And if you have any questions, you can shoot that, and I'll try to answer the best out of that. And uh, we'll conclude it with a kind of discussion. Uh, so that's going to be a general structure. Do you have any questions about the structure? OK, great. Uh, so what I'm going to do, just going to give a kind of general introduction, as I told. Um, you are you got a kind of 15 chapter book your books looks like this have you seen this before uh, can i see it yeah yeah this is this is your book and you got i'm pretty sure that you got oh, 15 lessons uh, which starts from what is church missionary by nature then evangelization basic duty of church missionary spirit and this is going to be ending like how the saints are uh, experienced that missionary life and how they live, live that life and how we can be missionaries too. This is going to be very interesting lesson to see that how we can be missionaries in life. In fact, our discussion today is going to be about how we can be missionaries on, uh, in our life. So um, the, this basic chapter is talking about or the basics of what is mission, what is mission bent by the church, and who was the first missionary, and how uh, the Holy Trinity and Holy Spirit uh, especially gives, empowers us to be the missionaries. And just having a kind of reflection about the church's missionary activities, we will be learning that in detail in the following lessons. Speaking about that, we are moving to the video. Uh, now listen to the video. After the end, at the end of the video, you can ask the questions. I just request you to uh, mute your phones or just listen to uh, the video. And we'll come back after the video. So I'm just going to share my screen. Um, hopefully, everything is going to work. Just let me know if you have any technical difficulties or anything to hear. Um, so we are going to start the video. Are you ready? Any answers? Yeah, ready. Okay, great. Hi everyone, welcome Come to grade 10. We're going to be starting with our first lesson today. Uh, before we start, let's do a quick opening prayer. I'll just get everybody to close their eyes and meditate on these words. We come before you, O Most Holy Trinity, as your children, as we start a new year of growing in the knowledge of you and your mission. Help us to understand this call to mission and to live this call in our lives. Saint Teresa of Lisieux, patron saint of missionaries, pray for us. Before we start, I'll do a quick overview of what's gonna be happening in uh, grade 10. So the catechism focuses on the mission of the church, and you'll find 15 chapters in your textbook. The first chapter explains how church is missionary by nature, and the 14 other chapters will elaborate the details of this mission starting with how the early church and saints lived this basic duty of the church. We'll also discuss the practical aspects of this mission in the day-to-day -day life of the church and the means for mission and the connection with charitable work. 
and it'll be interesting to see how this will play out in various vocations like family life, priesthood, and religious life. As we proceed through these chapters, we'll gain a greater understanding of how this will lead to a new creation. So the missionary nature of the church has been criticized as attempts of conversion or deemed as pro synthesization in the secular world. We are in a world which tries to suppress any mention of religion itself. And it's in this context that we look at the statement, church is missionary by nature. And our understanding of the mission of the church derives from the scripture and the magisterium of the church. And it's important to know some of the documents. The statement, church is missionary by nature, comes from the church document, Ad Gentis Divinitus, a decree of the Second Vatican Council, which happened in 1965. You also find two other documents that are important of the church quoted in this chapter. Evangelii Nundiandi and Redemptoris Meso. The encyclical Evangelii Nundiandi was released in 1975 by Pope Paul VI on the 10th anniversary of Ad Gentis. And the encyclical Redemptoris Meso was brought up by Pope St. John Paul II on the 25th anniversary in 1990. Uh, dear students, do you have any questions in general about this? If there's a kind of specific question, we will answer that uh, later after the classes. Uh, um, are you all clear about the lessons until now? Hello, are you listening? Yeah. Okay. Hi, Leon. Hi, Sreya. Hi, Alvin. Hi. Hi. Okay. So you all are clear about uh, the lessons until now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Continue there. Uh, if there's a specific question, we'll answer that at the end. And if there's nothing, we can continue. Okay. Great. Church has reflected on her own role as missionary and has elaborated it in clear terms in these documents. When we think of the term nature, what strikes us is the relationship between the church, which is the body of Christ, and Christ, who is the head of this body. Church is the body of Christ, and so her nature flows from its head. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, Jesus, before his ascension, commands the disciples, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. And in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, Jesus says to the disciples, Go into the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Thus, Jesus, the head, confirms this missionary nature of his body through his final commandment. Proclamation of the gospel is the mission Jesus entrusted to the church through the apostles. And our faith becomes meaningful only when we participate in God's experience of the church and the proclamation of the gospel. So the mission of the church actually originates from the Holy Trinity itself. The origin of the church arises from the mission of the Son and the Holy Spirit, according to the plan of God the Father. The word missionary comes from the Latin word mitere, means to send. Jesus was sent by the Father as he says in his prayer in John chapter 17, verse 18. As he sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. The missionary task of Jesus was to do the will of the Father. The purpose of this mission was to save us from the power of darkness and to have eternal life. So that's it for our first lesson of the year. Uh, before we end off, well, I'll do a quick recap of what we talked about so far. So we talked about how missionary nature of the church is criticized by the secular world. And it's in this context that we look at the statement, church is missionary by nature. 
and we also talk about the term nature and what strikes us is the relationship between the church which is the body of the Christ and Christ who is the head of the body and we also talk about the mission of the church and how it originates from the Holy Trinity and how our faith becomes meaningful only when we participate in God's experience of the church and proclamation of the gospel. Um, so before we end, uh, we'll do a small prayer. So I'll just get everybody to close their eyes. And so I'm stopping it over there because we are going to do a kind of conclusion prayer by ourselves today. So how was that experience just listening to a video tutorial? It was okay. It was okay. Okay. We could, that means that we could be a little more better. Yeah, yeah I think uh, it was a good video. Just have a kind of very specific um, things learned. Um, so any kind of recaps or something before we move into the questions? Did you feel that interesting? It was a kind of good learning experience? What I mean that, did you able to follow the videos? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, what I can do um, at the end of the classes today, um, I can send you the video if you want to see and um, uh, listen to that again, or to see some of that um, Bible verses and some of that particular document um, uh, she was referring to. Uh, so the, you can keep that into your um, video library or textbook library where you keep it or a Google Doc. Um, so you can refer back uh, even just before the exam day too uh, for something specific. So, um, okay. Do you have any specific questions? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so um, so in the very beginning of the chapter, there's the Bible quote from Mark chapter 16, verses 15, which says, Go through the whole world and preach the gospel to all mankind. Does it mean that not all missionaries should proclaim the gospel or teach the Bible? Oh, uh, yes. Um, uh, that's a very good question, Straya. Um, yeah, the basic um, or the kind of basic element of our uh, missionary activities is it's a proclamation of the gospel. Being told that one, that doesn't only mean that uh, we need to only teach from our Bible, which means that we are just always not teaching about the Bible, but we are showing that through our life experiences too. So I have been told by one of my great teachers uh, um, from the catechism, a kind of small active act you are doing, which is being told in the Bible, that's a kind of living lesson that you are teaching someone. When you're giving a kind of charity, when you're helping someone or something, that is a kind of living activities, which also can be called as a kind of missionary activity. You know that, like almost all the saints, at some point they taught the Bible, they proclaimed the gospel, they were teaching from the Bible, but most of them were identified or known for their act of that mission act, uh, their mission act, act or like how they uh, given that experience to the people. So that made uh, most of the other people attracted to them or to listen to them or to um, see how they are doing that activity. So um, proclamation of gospel is very important, but that is not only teaching the Bible or teaching elements, but also living that in our life too. Did I answer your question? Is that clear, Sreya? Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next question. Um, uh, why do we call Jesus as the first missionary? Is it because he is the primary spokesperson of the gospel? Yeah, in the chapter, I know that it's identified that um, Jesus B is identified as the first missionary. Yeah, of course, he is the first spokesman of the gospel. But later through the chapter, we'll also see that um, what was Jesus' mission? Who was Jesus? He was the son of the God. So what a kind of greater uh, kind of humility that he has taken from being a kind of son of God to be a man. Uh, 
So, and he just dissented in a kind of way. He dissented from his godship to a man, and he lived a life of that missionary. Of course, he proclaimed the gospel. He did help a lot of people. He has done a kind of lo lot of miracles at the same time. I'll just give that um, simple. That means that is just to see that um, show the people like how believing in God can change their life or how it can make a difference in their life. And he sacrificed himself for us. So all his life is a kind of missionary act from his birth to be born as a kind of human being uh, to the resurrection through the crucifixion and all the sufferings he suffered for us and he risen from the dead. It's a kind of missionary activity and he showed the perfect example. So he proclaimed the gospel. He was a spokesperson of, a spokesperson of the gospel. But more than that, he lived that missionary life from the beginning to the uh, beginning to the to the end, that means it's still going of, of his life, and he taught us a great lesson. So I think um, that also should be a kind of very good point to see that um, he is the kind of first spoke person or the first missionary that we can identify him. Was that clear, Alvin? Yes, thank you. Great. Okay, any questions? Any other questions? Uh, yeah, so... When we look into the life of missionaries, we see most of them had a lot of sufferings, persecutions, or were killed and given up many things. So does it mean that in order to become a missionary, one should go through some sort of these? Hmm. That's a great question. So in fact, like uh, to be a missionary is a lot of suffering. Yeah, there's a kind of uh, good words that without suffering, there won't be a crown kind of thing. But you know, um, in all their sufferings, they were doing one thing. They were believing in God. They were they were proclaiming the gospel. And when you see most of the life from uh, our saints and the missionaries, uh, they never complained for their suffering. What they did, they used that suffering to glorify the God. Definitely, being a kind of missionary, sometimes we might need to lose something. That doesn't mean that it is always a suffering. Uh, that might be a kind of small act, a sacrifice or something. Okay, instead of getting this pleasure, just, just a kind of simple example for you guys. Uh, instead of going for the movie tonight, I'm just going to save that money. I'm going to do some charity with that. That's the kind of suffering you take that to leave that pleasure behind and to take a kind of greater virtue of helping someone. But you you have a kind of mission behind that. So all the kind of missionaries, I think that when they were taking that suffering or leaving something, they were trying to glorify the God through that. So um, that act gives a kind of that spirit of mission to us and to be a kind of missionary. Um, and we are being a kind of missionaries in that small act to help someone is a kind of mission activity that we are doing in the greater church too. Um, so, yeah, um, it doesn't always mean that you need to go through a kind of persecutions or sufferings. Sometimes in a kind of good spirit, if you're going in to speak about the gospel in a kind of uh, another place where they persecute the Christians or those who speak the gospel, um, you might be need to take that persecution. I, I also remember like a kind of word from... Um, uh, Father Daniel, one of the, you might be heard about him, one of the famous uh, preacher um, uh, from back home. He always used to tell that we doesn't know what is God's plan about us, but he has crafted us a kind of perfect a human being. And he has a very good vision and plan for us. Uh, these all missionaries, what they did, they seeked for that God's plan and they surrendered themselves to that plan. And that's how they just had that a missionary life or sin life in their uh, uh, life. Um, so uh, being mindful about the time, um, I'm just going to stop the question session now because we need to go into a kind of a group discussion. As I have informed you guys before, we are just going to have a quick discussion, I'll say it for five minutes. Um, and you know, the topic for the discussion today is how can we participate in the missionary activities of the church? 
uh, listening to all the lessons today and the questions and answers. Uh, this is your chance to have that discussion. So I told you uh, to prepare some thoughts about uh, missionaries in your life or how uh, you can uh, show that missionary experience to the world. So that's going to be the content for our discussions today, as I told, um, just five minute discussion and I'm going to be monitoring the sessions. Um, so who wants to first talk about that? Then we'll open for the discussion. All of you can unmute your phones and if you wish to um, uh, discuss, you can start it. And if you have anything to add on to the others, you can do that, but it will be just for the five minutes. Yeah, now the floor is yours, guys. Who wants to start the discussions? So I have a question. Yeah. So um, when you say that, um, like the missionary in our church, what, what exactly do you mean by that? When we're talking about um, how we can be missionaries in the church, like how, uh, in a general that we can make it, I think that how we can be missionaries in our life. Oh, uh, okay. Well, um, we can like donate to charities. Mm hmm Do you think that, okay, that's a, yeah. Um, this also, um, um, Oh, we could like um, give extra food or um, uh, like things to the food bank. Mm -hmm. You know, that's feeding the hunger. Like that's a mission activities. Yeah. And giving this money to charity that is helping someone um, just to get a kind of better lifestyle or a kind of, a kind of get better treatment or to have a housing. Yeah, of course, that's all the charity kind of things what you can do. Um, yeah, think about being a kind of grade 10 student or in a kind of um, early youthhood within that adolescent spirit, how you can do that. You might not be able to do big activities, but something that you can do. Sreya and Alvin, do you have any thoughts about that? How we can live the life of missionaries in our life? Uh, with like volunteering at like some kind of charity things. That's know? good. Giving your time. Giving your time, that's a good thing. Helping the communities and your neighbors. Great, helping like the communities and the neighbors. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, You know, I should I should uh, reflect a kind of thought from that, Alvin. Um, I have seen um, a kind of uh, a board in, when, I came, when I first moved into Canada, like I have seen that um, angels are helping. Angels that... I work with something kind of some, I, I don't exactly remember that, but the essence of that one was uh, the kids in that community or the youth in that community helps the neighbors who are elders to clean their snow or to cut their grasses. It was the kids were volunteering kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, some, sometimes that's a kind of missionary activity to helping a kind of simple example of what you can do in your community of just to pick up a trash and put it in the trash box. Uh, not at this time. I think that you need to wear your glasses before you do that. But that is something that you are keeping the community clean. That's a kind of another mission activity. That's a great point, Alvin. That was a good point, Sreya, volunteering and donating to charity, other kind of things. That was a good point, Leon. So I have a question to you now. Are you all going to be missionaries in your life? You can try to in like small little ways. Yeah, great. See, what we learned from the class, we all can be missionaries in that yeah. small deeds what we are doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. That was a great discussion. And um, yeah, I think that uh, I could answer your question. So uh, now we can close this class uh, with uh, prayer. Uh, we can have a, uh, our Father, Hail Mary, and the Glory. Um, who wants to lead the prayer today? Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. We'll go for the prayer today. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thou be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
First thing in his chance, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Amen. Let's do us in the beginning. Let's do us in the beginning. Amen. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, just don't hesitate to um, give me a call or to text me. Otherwise, we will meet next Sunday. Um, if there is any kind of change with the time schedule, I'll just inform you prior. Um, if not, we'll go forward with with uh, lesson two next Sunday. Thank you. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you, Chibu. And dear students, uh, it was a wonderful session. Uh, now I invite uh, Mrs. Shanti Pavlos to propose a word of thanks. Thank you, Aja. Good evening, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be part of this initiative and meet you all. And it's my privilege to propose a word of thanks today. As we adopt to the changes integrated to the global pandemic, the new instruction tool devised by our party is an absolute grace to our catechist not just for the circumstance, current circumstances, but as a reference tool once we are back to normal. I extend my appreciation and gratitude for Father Augustine for coordinating this hybrid demo today by connecting with the Epark Hill Catechetical Department and other members. Thank you, Ajahn. Remote learning and teaching are something that we all are exploring now. We had Dr. Chibu Thomas who demonstrated the model hybrid class. We express our gratitude and appreciation for such an incredible presentation the expectations and the tips. The session was informative and at the same time a great demo of how interactive an online class can be. This will be a guide for our catechist across the party of Mississauga. Thank you, Dr. Chibu. Thank you. Thank you, Alvin, Leon and Tommy for joining us today and for your interactive participation. Really appreciate your interest in learning and growing in faith. Let the Almighty shower his blessings and guide you through in all your ventures. Once again, thank you for this enhancing opportunity to interact with you all and for being with us this evening. Thank you.